Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video I am continuing on with my Fellowship of the Ring set and we are moving on to part 7 and for part 7 I'm going to be painting Gimli and I am really really proud of how this one has come out so I'm hoping you guys are going to stick with me and stick along, uh, maybe paint along and I hope that we're going to have some really good fun with this one. So. Without further ado, we're going to start off with the skin like normal, and I'm just going to go with my normal tried and tested Vallejo set, and I'm just going to start with the beige red. This is a really good base colour for skin, and if you've watched me paint a lot of different skin videos, you'll see why I use it so much. It is great. So, what I'm going to do then is once that's dry, I'm moving on to the beard, and for this I'm using orange brown from Vallejo. And this is a really cool colour because it is a little bit orangey, but it is also a little bit brown, exactly like it says on the tin. Now, what's good with this is when we use a little bit of a shade or a wash on this one, this one will tone down quite a bit into a more brown colour allowing us to simply then just boost it back up with a very very small amount of light dry brushing so it's a fantastic really good starting color uh, especially if you paint like i do and you add a little bit of a wash and a shade to your miniatures so i'm just being careful to paint the uh, beard and of course the hair on the back here um, i'm just being careful not to get it onto the skin it doesn't matter so much about some of the other areas because you're going to do all of that later anyway now moving on to a colour that I use a lot which is Tenebrous Grey, again if you've watched any of my other videos you'll know that you can use black and that will do equally the same thing. Um, I just use the Tenebrous Grey because this moves quite nicely onto my uh, miniatures from my brush, it's quite easy to manipulate and move around um, and it has a really cool matted sort of black effect once it dries as well. And what I'm using this for, I'm painting everything that I want to be metal. So as you can see, Gimli has a few little bits of chainmail in between the arms, the elbows, things like that. He also has this little area just across of scale mail, just across the back of the helmet. And he also has this round area across the helmet and things like that as well. So the shoulder pads, the, um, uh, the, 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 the shoulder pads, the chain mail, the helmet, the scale mail, and of course the axe heads. Uh, we're going to paint all of these in a black colour because we'll build these up into a non-metallic metal later. That's one of the reasons why this video is a little bit longer than normal, um, but it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Um, like I say, I'm quite proud of how this one's come out. This one is uh, one of my favourite ones to paint, actually. Not only does the model have loads and loads and loads of character, um, but once he starts getting into some of the completed stages, he actually looks really, really, really great. So again, like I said, just trying to be as careful as possible around the helmet, not to get this uh, black or greyish colour on the face and on the skin areas. The good thing with doing these base coats is you can fix them quite simply uh, without worrying too much about it, like we haven't done too many layers later. So I'm moving on to one of my favourite colours here with a dark rust from Vallejo. This is a really great dark brown colour that you can use multiple different browns on top to build up in different tones. I use this one a lot for things like painting leathers and things like that because it is a great base colour. So I'm just doing the boots, I'm also doing the gloves as well and I'm also going to do the belt as well in the same. Uh, so I'm just trying to paint these areas so that we can build the leathers up a little bit later on because looking at a lot of um, looking at a lot of um, sort of reference photos of Gimli he seems to be wearing quite a few different colors of leather so that's kind of what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix a few different colors of brown together and we're gonna get this really cool sort of um, mixed leather effect on Gimli and it's gonna look really really great it's gonna be quite a fun one to do um, because there's a lot to be said for mixing a lot of different browns together to to create in a really cool effect at the end so once we've done all of those bits with the dark rust, we're just going to move on to flat earth. And again, this is a really good, um, this is a really good brown colour. This is one of my favourites for doing things like wood. This has a really sort of different kind of um, colour to it. This is really, really great for base colour in wood. And then we'll build up from there and use multiple tones uh, a little bit later. So this is a really good one to do the handles of the axes with. Now. Something that I've noticed, quite a lot of people tend to paint Gimli in red, yet a lot of the photos and the reference pictures that I've seen, he isn't actually wearing uh, red as such, but he's wearing leather, or rather a reddish colour. 
So what I've decided to do with this painting is instead of painting him red or anything like that, because we painted Boromir red, we wanted to try and do something a little bit different, a little bit unique to this model, and something that will make him stand out, and maybe be a little bit more true to the sort of source material in the movies. So I'm using a red leather colour from Vallejo, and that is exactly what it says on the tin. It's a sort of light orange reddy brown colour, um, and it's a really, really great colour to, to, uh, to, to base coat with. Um, but it's also a really nice reddish colour that will give us a slight difference to that leather uh, main piece to the body. Whereas we're not going to paint it all bright red and overdo it. We kind of want this to be a little bit more toned down. Again, sticking with the uh, the sort of style that I painted the rest of the set because everything's quite toned down, quite neutral. It's, it's almost quite um, matted in a way. I've got a lot of matte colours and things like that. So if you followed the other... Uh, Fellowship of the Ring videos, you kind of know exactly what I mean. If this is the first Fellowship of the Ring video that you've joined me on, uh, then please, you know, feel free to go back and check out some of the others because there are six more before this and I've been having a real great fun time sort of painting all of these different characters. Um, I can't wait to get all nine of them done so that I can put them together on a display in my cabinet and it's going to look fantastic. So once we've done all of that red leather, which is all of the main areas of the leathers, uh, we're just going to move on to Beastie Brown, just to do a little bit of the backpacks on his back. Because Gimli is carrying a couple of different things. He's got one or two bags just here, so I'm painting these in this Beastie Brown colour. And again, this is just to make uh, colours a little bit different and mix up those browns so that we're not using the same browns all the time. It gives your eyes something to look at and something a little bit different to catch your attention. Um, Beastie Brown is a great colour for that. It's a nice sort of flat colour. Now I'm using an olive green from AK Interactive on the bedroll. There's a lot of different colours that you can use for this. I wanted, again, just something that would poke out something, especially um, against that sort of red leather that would stand off a bit so that's something that would catch your eye and detract from the whole miniature being really drab and dull. So I'm just using this olive green just to boost a little bit of uh, character and a little bit of interest on the back here. Now, once we've got all of those sort of base colours done, we're going to use a shade or a wash or whatever you want to call it. Um, for this one, I'm using a um, Games Workshop, so just a Citadel. This is a Agrax Earth shade, um, and you can use any kind of uh, shade that you're comfortable with. So for me, I'm using Agrax Earth shade, but this one is just pretty much a nice dark brown shade, so it's very earthy. Again, we stick in with those earthy tones, so this is going to tone down the red leather, it's going to tone down the beard, and things like that. So this is a really cool way of toning that down, ready for us to build back up. Now, once the Agrax Earthshade is dried, we're going to move on to the beard. So, like I was saying with the beard, as you can see, that Agrax Earthshade has really sort of darkened that orange down. So, it doesn't look too overbearing or too bright. So, we're just going to use a very small dry brush and just dry brush a little bit of that orange brown back on. But we're trying to stick this orange brown just to the front area so that it just makes that little bit of orange pop on the front. And once that's dry, we're going to move on to the skin colours, and we're just going to build the skin tones up. Well, we're not going to go too far. Being a dwarf, Gimli does have a little bit of a darker skin colour. So we're just going to do a little bit of the uh, beige red back in, as you can see. Just being very, very careful, just to catch the nose and the cheekbones, and of course, across that lip as well. And I'm going to leave him at that. I'm not going to build too much colour tone and too much brightness and vibrance on him, because I don't really think we need to go too far. He doesn't have a lot of skin anyway. So from there, I'm just going to use a ash grey colour, and this ash grey colour, I'm going to just gently pick out some of the colours of the chainmail just down the front. Now, I'm going to dry brush this on some of the other areas, but I'm just trying to pick out some of the bits as best I can just across the front here, just so that I get a little bit more control as to where the light is picking on this chainmail. Sticking with uh, these trying to be a little bit more of a... Um, uh, like a non-metallic metal colour, so we're going to go through a few different greys and build this up in a few different ways in a few different shades so that it creates this element of light bouncing off the chainmail. So as you can see, I'm just gently trying to make sure that I catch a few of those little bits of the chainmail that's protruding and sticking out. And of course, I'm just going across the uh, the edges and, and, and the bits just in between sort of the gloves and things like that, just here, as you can see, just on the chainmail that's poking out across the armour. Just building that with the ash grey. And this is a great grey because this is a really good sort of dark grey to begin with. And then, of course, when we put the lighter grey on top, that's going to create that illusion and that element of certain areas catching the light. So for that lighter grey, we're going to move on to this graphite. 
um, and this is a really good sort of natural uh, progression so this is just a natural highlight to the one that we were using so as you can see I'm just doing a little bit of dry brush across the belt buckle as well and of course just across the little bit on the helmet also and now I'm being a little bit more specific about where I place the dry brushing on this and I'm also trying to be as careful as possible not to get this on any of the other colors but this is why I'm doing the dry brushing first because if we do make any mistakes we can always build those and fix those later um, you don't want to do the dry brushing last and end up with uh, you know causing yourself to dry brush over things that you've spent a long time painting and with dry brushing less is always more it's always good to just put little bits in at a time so we're also going to do a small highlight of silver grey and just doing the exact same thing being very 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 specific where this goes and of course just across the belt buckle and across the insignia on the front of the helmet there as well Now moving on from that, we're going to spend a little bit more time now building the red leather back up. This is one of the biggest areas of the miniature and one of the biggest areas to paint. So this has got the majority of the colour on the model and the majority of the colour on the miniature. So because of that, we're going to paint this one first. We're going to spend a bit of time really getting this colour looking exactly as we want it. And then we'll go back and we'll build up some of the other colours later. So what I'm doing is I'm just using nice thin tones of the red leather and I'm just following the miniature as uh, the, the miniature sculpt really. So what I'm doing is I'm just picking out as you can see where those lines are coming down from the miniature and I'm painting these straight lines and these sort of straight ways uh, these, these sort of straight brush strokes down from the belt uh, down the model. And I'm doing that just so that the lines of my uh, paint uh, and, and the way that I'm painting actually matches the way that the clothing and the fabric falls on the miniature. Um, and the reason for that is because I don't want any brush strokes that are going to look or feel a little bit off on the miniature. I don't want to paint like a crossways or a diagonals and then you notice it a little bit later. I'm kind of trying to keep things quite uniform so that as it blends together, the colour will fall and the, the lightness and the, the highlights will fall just a little bit more naturally onto the model. So we're going just around the areas, just around the, uh, the shoulders and the chest area here as well, in between where the beard is. So just trying to be as careful as possible. And as you can see, I'm using a very, very fine detailed brush as well to build all of these colors back up. And he has this sort of cross strap section just across the back where we, again, just trying to be very careful so that we leave the shade in the recess points and things like that. Now, what I'm going to do, because I said about this being a red leather and not being a red tone, I'm going to add a small amount of red into it just to build this back up. So I'm using a small bit of dirty red from AK Interactive, and I'm just uh, placing a very, very, very small drop of this onto my palette before adding the red leather in. Now, the reason why I'm using such a small amount of this red is because this red can take over the color of your red leather. And the last thing you want to do is paint something this red leather, this sort of ready brown and then add too much red onto it and the other thing we're also going to do as you can see I'm adding three drops of water into this so I'm adding quite a lot of water into this so that I can water this down and make this into a lot more of like a lighter glaze color and again the reason for that is because I want this to be a nice thin tone that I can build up if needs be I don't want to put a big splodge of this color on change the overall color of the model instead I'm just going to try to make this as subtle and as light as possible and I'm going to build this color in in stages and the cool thing we're doing these sort of really thin kinds of glazes is each layer that you add onto the model the more vibrance you get out of this color as well so this is a really 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 good technique in terms of building vibrance into the model instead of going all in in one big go you build up and build up in layers so you do two three four five six layers depending on how far you want that um that overall sort of vibrance and color to poke through so i'm just going to try and do the same thing again keeping our paintbrush going in the same direction as you can see painting down the miniature following the creases of the model following the folds of the model and trying our best to keep things as uniformed as possible and so I'm just trying to show you an extended little bit of uh, the painting of the red leather points. 
purely because this is the larger part of the miniature or the biggest, most noticeable part of the miniature. I thought I'd spend a little bit of time sort of showing you how um, I'm painting this area, so my brush strokes and how sort of fine detail we'd be in. So just using uh, a little bit of a mixture of different things. So like I say, we're trying to stick with the uniform pattern of the clothing and the folds, but I'm also just using the very tip of the brush as well to add a little bit of a stippling or dabbing effect, as you can see. I'm not being uh, too precious when it comes to some of the other areas around the ankles and around the uh, the leathers just on the back and on the front. We're not going to follow a specific pattern. We're just going to try to dab some of the paints in as well. And this is going to create a little bit of a texture and a little bit of a, a sort of... Um, uh, like I say, like a texture sort of effect out of the paint. So as the paint dries down, it's not going to dry flat in one flat color. It's going to add a little bit more to the um, the sort of um, the light range and color range of the model. And that's kind of what we're looking for, especially across the uh, the gloves here. Now, what I did notice with this miniature is it doesn't have a great deal of detail along the gloves and the greaves area. Now, I normally would spend a little bit of time working out how, uh, you know, the, the sort of uh, symbols and dwarven symbols that he's got across the, the greaves and maybe paint them in by hand. Um, but this miniature is pretty small, so I didn't want to go too extreme and mess things up. So I've tried to keep things as, as more simplistic and more natural and neutral as possible. So for the next uh, stage, what I'm going to do is, we're still using our red leather, but instead of combining it with a small amount of red, this time I'm going to combine it, as you can see, with a very small bit of bone white. And bone white is a great sort of creamy colour, so it's not white, it's more like a cream. It's a really good colour to make highlights with. And that's exactly what we're going to do with this. We're going to create a very, very cool, easy highlight. We're obviously going to mix a few dabs of water in. Um, and we're going to make this into a nice highlight and then we're going to use it to pick out a lot of the very very fine details so this is going to make this color look slightly different so this isn't as red and it's not quite um, as base uh, like the base color this is going to be a little bit lighter and a little bit brighter and the reason for that is we can use this as you can see just to pick out some of the very very fine edges so we're going to pick out the, uh, the, the main edges going down the front of the leather but we can also pick out some of those streaks and some of the leather uh, where the folds are as well and this is going to add to that worn out leather look and that give it a little bit more depth a little bit more detail into that area of the model and, or, or, and because we've watered this paint down as well this is going to blend and dry quite nicely into the model so this isn't going to leave a big big bright splodge and it's not going to look too over the top or um, out of place this is going to look really really cool this is going to add a really nice sort of deeper um, as I say texture to the model so as you can see I'm just trying to keep it and, and following a lot of the folds across the front but then of course also going to follow just a little bit across the back area here just picking out some of the top parts and just that top area there may be a little bit too thick so I'll go back with the red leather and just just fix that up as well because I want these just to be nice and thin and nice smaller areas rather than being uh, too too extreme too big as you can see I'm doing the same thing just across the greaves just trying to pick out some scratches using a, a dabbing sort of technique and this is going to create a really really different sort of um, a really different level of depth and really different sort of way in which the the greaves are scratched and scraped and worn as you can see this is going to add so much more character to the model so we're going to move back to the dark rust but what i'm going to do with the dark rust i mix in half dark rust with half a leather brown from vallejo and with these two this is going to brighten up uh, this this dark rust into being a little bit of a lighter brown and for this one i'm going to be using this on the um the, the little bit of trousers just underneath the chainmail but i'm also using this on the gloves because i've noticed again looking through the reference photos gimli has much brighter leather gloves than he does um sort of like the greaves and things like that so we're going to use this one as our first stage up in building the uh, the color of these trousers of these gloves just making these a little bit of a brighter leather a little bit of a lighter color um, and this le uh, this this sort of um, leather brown um, color is perfect for this 
So once you've done the half and half, so the dark rust and leather brown combination, we're just going to use the leather brown on its own. And again, with this being nice and thin, this will blend um, quite nicely into the miniature. This will dry down really, really lovely. This will create a nice, um, much more sort of lighter leather colour to the model. So this is going to show the gloves off a lot more in comparison to the greaves, because the greaves being that red colour, these now being this sort of toned up sort of brighter leather colour, really going to make these stand off each other. We're going to do the same, just being careful just across the trousers here, just to try to make sure that we pick out the folds, the creases and the details as well. And I mean, you could push this a little bit further if you wanted, with a little bit of bone white mixed in. Um, I'm not going to push it any further. I think that the uh, leather brown on its own is just enough. Now, sticking with leather brown, we're just going to go in and use leather brown from a different painting company. So this one is the AK Interactive Leather Brown. So this is a slightly different colour brown. So this one isn't as bright. This one isn't as vibrant. This is a little bit more of a, a traditional sort of brown. And what we're going to do with this, we're going to use this to paint things like the belt and the boots. So we're going to paint these colours so that we get a different kind of brown and a different kind of leather. So as I was saying at the beginning, using mixed different leather colours and mixed different leather tones and browns is going to add a lot more depth to this character. The last thing we want to do is cover it all in one colour brown and then it look a little bit flat. So by adding these mixed tones and mixed brown uh, colour ranges, they're actually going to build a lot more character, build a lot more interest, something more for your eyes to see, something more to, to pull you to different parts of the model. As you can see, I'm also being very, very careful just to paint the very, very thin bands leading around these sort of shoulder pads. And I'm leaving the shoulder pads themselves uh, this, this sort of dark grey, blacky colour. And the reason for that is we're going to build those up as non-metallic metals later. Now, if you've seen me paint leathers before, you'll know this sort of setup quite well. Once the leather brown has dried, I'm mixing in the deep brown and leather brown together. And then I'm just using a very fine uh, stippling effect just to dab a little bit of this colour onto the belt and then back onto the shoes. And again, this dabbing and scratching technique is going to add to that worn leather, that, that battered sort of worn out colour, especially across things like the shoes and the boots, where obviously by using these boots and walking in these boots, they're going to look a lot more worn and not as nice and pristine as you'd expect. We're also going to do the same thing just across those very thin bands as well using that deep brown, leather brown mixture and as I said I'm just using those perfectly in half so it's one blob each so that they are exactly equal parts. And there we go, you can see a lot of these colours, a lot of these browns and things really starting to pop and really starting to bring this model and this character to life. We're starting to see a lot more of this, um, a lot more of the character looking uh, a, a lot more like the movie. I'm just using a small dab of vampiric flesh. This is quite similar to the bone white, um, slightly different colour. Um, so you could use the bone white if you wanted to, if you don't have vampiric flesh. And that's all I'm doing with this one, is I'm just painting this across the, uh, the bands of the hair, just so that it looks like um, the areas where the bands are, so it separates the hair. And a little bit just across on the front, on the beard as well. This is just where it makes it look like these uh, little sort of ties and things like that, that are tying the beard and tying the hair together, just holding it in place. And again, just breaking up those colours, adding a little bit of something to look at that creates um, more character. So we're going to move back into the olive green and we're going to paint this olive green back on top of the... Um, I don't know if this is like a sleeping bag or a, a bedroll or something like that. Um, we're just going to paint the olive green in first, just like so. Just being careful, trying to keep the uh, the darker colour in the recess, the shade in the recess, so that it builds that um, illusion of depth on the model as well. It's just going to be as careful as possible not to get this now on any of the red leathers that we've painted. But as you can see, that green now is really starting to stand off that red leather, really popping on the model, really making it uh, something completely unique. And we're going to add a little bit of a highlight with this golden olive, and this time we're just going to be much, much more um, specific about where we place this, so just across the areas where we think the light is going to catch and where we think the light is going to um, be sort of sat just on, on top of this area. And again, with those little sort of um, very fine sort of brush strokes, that's going to add a little bit of uh, depth and character as well. As you can see, I'm just building the folds through the inside as well. 
and then we're going to go back to that flat earth so now we're going to build up the uh, the wooden handles of the axes and the cool thing with this is we're going to make these look really really sort of wooden um, as well and these are going to be great so we're using this flat earth first and then using the very tip of the brush we're going to pick out and paint long streaks and, and um, you know sort of streaky brush strokes just across the wooded area but as you can see i'm trying to leave some of that shade and some of that uh, wash on the middle as well so that, that creates almost like wood grain effect creates these lines going through the wood and that's kind of how you want to do it you, you don't want to paint the whole thing straight back up in the same color you want to use a much thinner brush and just paint these very very fine lines across um, leaving some of the um, the shade so that that creates this wood grain, this sort of like wood effect. Because with wood, when you're looking at wood, it's not one flat colour. There are different sort of layers to it, different sort of grains to it and things like that. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So as you can see, we're going on to the beige brown as well then as a highlight. And again, you can see I'm just being as careful as possible. And I'm just using that very, very fine detail brush and just trying to paint these fine, thin strokes, fine, thin lines that create this wood grain effect. And again, you can use the dab in motion as well, because that's all going to add to the fact that, uh, like I say, the wood grain effect isn't perfect. It's going to give that imperfection and, and build up that sort of um, realism to the wood then, so that it's not, like I say, it's not just one flat colour or anything like that. Uh, adds a lot more to the depth of the model, adds a lot more to the, uh, the overall sort of um, effect and the overall sort of look to the model as well, which is going to be great. So once all of that's done, we're pretty much done with the basic colors. What I'm going to do from here is I'm just going to go and do the non-metallic metals. And these are the colors that I use for the non-metallic metals. So you're more than welcome to pause or take a screenshot and, and, and check out which colors I'm using because this is the AK Interactive non-metallic metal set. And I've been practicing and using these in a certain type of way. And I've got my own kind of little way of working with them, which I think is pretty cool. And I've been using it on these um, these... Uh, Lord of the Rings sort of Fellowship of the Ring box um, and the more that I'm using it the more I'm practicing so the better I'm becoming with it and the more uh, the happier I'm becoming with how it's, it's sort of the effect is turning out and I really like how it's come out on Gimli so stick with it and we'll show you how we build through it so we start in with this anthracite grey which is a really bluish grey and the cool thing with that is by using this sort of bluish grey it's going to add this sort of like steel effect later because it's going to add a little bit more to the character than it just being a flat black or a flat um, dark colour underneath. So I'm covering the majority of the parts in the anthracite grey. Now from there then I'm going to mix half and half so I'm going with the ash grey and anthracite grey. Now ash grey is a really dark grey colour so what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to pick out some of the areas where I want uh, some of the darker points to be and then we're going to build up some of the lighter stages some of the lighter colours over the top as well. Now what you'll notice with this is I'm using a very very specific sort of dabbing technique with this because we're trying to make it look like a bit more of a battered worn metal so we don't want this to be like a really polished brand new steel effect. We want this to have a little bit of um, a beaten up and worn out sort of colour. Now the cool thing by doing these non-metallic metals is to begin with you watch it, you paint it and you think this is going nowhere. Two or three layers in and you still think mm, this isn't really getting very far. But as you start getting closer towards the edges and closer towards the end and add in the brighter highlighting colours, it really, really, really does start to stand out and look amazing. So going back and just using the ash grey. So this is just the ash grey on its own. And again, just picking up some of the areas where I'd like some of the, the darker tones to be and things like that. And what you'll find is by mixing these two, sort of the ash grey, this, this dark grey, and the anthracite sort of bluish grey this has given us a really good foundation to build our lighter colours on top of so this is very much just the base colour of what we're making and the cool thing with these is if you do make any mistakes with the lighter colours you can always come back to these tones and build the darker tones back in later so don't worry too much if you make mistakes the trick is to just play with it power through sort of um, uh, and, and learn as you go in, you know, learn from your mistakes, learn from where you're, you, you, you think the sort of light is going to affect the model and things like that. Especially with these colours, because you're using them nice and thin, 
sometimes the effect doesn't show through until the colors sort of dry down properly so when you're looking at them uh, they look a little bit too bright sometimes it's because they're still a little bit wet so you need to wait for the color to dry down to get the most out of the effect so with this graphite you can see i'm being really specific now so especially across the helmet here you can see that i've picked an area where i want a nice chunk of the light to be and then i've just used a separate brush just a kind of uh, a damp brush just to kind of pull some of that paint across so that that paint doesn't just sit in one splodge in one area and what i'm trying to do is i'm now selecting where i want the highlights to be so with this um this graphite color this is kind of the base of where the highlight is going to go so we're going to keep the darker area that the ash gray and things like that as they are but we're just going to build this graphite into kind of the stepping stones into the highlight so as you can see i'm using this towards the front parts of the helmet and then i'm just building a small part across uh, the sides of the helmet and of course across the back as well and across that scale mill part across the back as well so what i'm going to try to do is focus the light in certain areas so as you can see i'm not covering the whole axe i want just certain parts of the axe to be built and ready for the highlight in and again same with the scale mail i'm not going to cover all of the scale mail just trying to be more selective in the center of the scale mail so that it almost looks like the light is more centralized rather than it being the light on everything and the same way here you can see i'm just painting a chunk of that helmet but leaving some of the uh, the darker gray then in areas and in patches so that it looks like the light is bouncing or or the light is catching on certain parts of his helm So using that stippling effect, we're doing the same thing just across the shoulder pads. So now we're building where we want the highlight to be. Now, again, I'm using a stippling effect on the shoulder pads because I want this to be more battered and worn. I don't want this to look too uniform. I don't want it to look too clean. I want this to be looking like the kind of uh, metallic or the kind of shoulder pads of someone that has seen a scrap or two, someone that's been in the wars, you know, someone that knows how to fight. You don't want it looking too polished and too pristine because it'll almost look like... Um, you know he's got all the gear and no idea you know someone that isn't able to fight someone that is just looking too brand new um you want someone that looks rough and ready and, and raring to go you know so what we're going to do from there is we're going to mix the graphite in with silver gray now silver gray is a very 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 good paint uh, it's a great color because it immediately makes your non-metallic metals pop it's this grayish uh, mixture this grayish blend where it really does have an amazing effect on the model and an amazing effect on your non-metallics and how they sort of pop and grow so again I'm being a little bit more specific about where I'm placing this and as you can see I'm just building that color again through the front parts of the helm and across the little slithers that I've painted just on the helm itself so just across the back here as well like so and again across the scale mail so trying to be a little bit more uh, catered towards the central area of the scale mail and just on the top area of the shoulders and again we're going to do the same sort of thing we're just going to build this up in tongues in stages and in layers and the more layers you go through the more sort of uh, the, the, the better quality your non-metallics are so the more layers you build the more you blend together uh, the cooler this effect looks so just be patient practice 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 that's so all it takes is practice i mean i'm no expert still and i've been doing this a little bit now uh, you know this is the seventh model that i'm doing non-metallics on uh, in in this series alone um, but it's all practice it's all practice it's fun to do and it's really amazing it's really rewarding when you get towards the um at the end stages and you get to look at how cool and how amazing uh the effect looks on the model and how much you've been able to do so we're just moving on now just using that silver gray on its own and again just being a little bit more specific now so just trying to be a little bit more uh centralized to where we place this as you can see so just across some of the more central areas we want the light to really catch on the model because this is going to be uh, one of the, uh, the, the the major stepping stones in that highlight and then again just using that stippling effect just being very controlled across the shoulder pads being very controlled across where we we want this sort of light to shine so we want this light almost to be shining just across from the top or bouncing around from some of the uh, the, the top areas of the uh, the, the model 
And again, just being very careful to keep this across the front area of that helmet. And you can see this, this non-metallic uh, effect is really starting to show through. It's really starting to pop now. It's starting to grow. Um, so we're going to use like an extreme highlight in a little bit. And that's really going to make this stand out. And it's really going to uh, finish and seal the effect off. I'm going to do the same just across the axis again. So just pick in where I want. Uh, the final sort of stages of the lighting to be. So I'm trying to pick the, the, the highlight across the top area of the axe while it's darker just down the bottom. Again, just almost kind of creating the effect that light is, is further up or that light is, is higher up on the model rather than all over the model. And just trying to pick where, where I want that to be. Again, you can see how thin the paints are, how nice and easy this is smoothly uh, going onto the model, but it'll also dry down quite nicely as well. So for the final stage of the non-metallic metal, I'm going to use the off-white colour. Now you can go a little bit further, and in the picture I did show white as well, um, but by the time I had done the off-white, I thought that this was popping quite, quite nicely, and I didn't feel like I needed to go any further uh, than I had done, because just by using that extreme white on its own, might have just gone a little bit too far. So uh, I'm just using the off-white, and what I'm doing now is I'm being really really careful and really specific and as you can see I'm just using this just across the very edges and the very tips and this is just white this is so bright and this is just bright enough on top of all of those greys that it's really gonna make those colors and those blends really pop so as you can see I'm just trying to use a uh, little edge highlight across the uh, the axis here just to kind of create that character see where the light is just about catching certain areas or certain parts of the axe as well and especially across the helm you can see where this is sort of um, where you can see where this is sort of just picking out some of those extreme extreme details so the shoulder pads I'm just picking a little bit more uh, of that dabbing effect just where I want the light to be focused the most and the same we're just being very 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 specific now on the scale mail just across the back and here we go just down the very central of those those white edges those white points across the helm as well again just trying to be as specific as possible so we're just using this almost like an edge highlight and this is really going to make uh, those metallics pop and there you have it that is our Gimli complete this has got to be one of my favorite ones that I've painted so far for the fellowship purely because of the mixture of those different browns the non-metallic metal I think has come out really nicely the wood grain effect on the axes looks really really lovely um, and he just suits he fits the bill he looks exactly in place with the rest of the fellowship so all in all i really hope that you enjoyed this video i hope that you're enjoying my fellowship of the ring set there's only two more to go so i hope you guys stick with me through them and then we'll be moving on to something a little bit different but as always thank you so much for tuning in thank you for watching your comments your support this channel has become a really 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 lovely and positive place to be a positive place for me to post videos uh, and talk to you guys but also a positive thing for newbies and beginners to learn some new things as well so thank you so much for all of your support and we'll see you guys on the next one